when, when I started doing film and video, first I was really interested in film uh, and I was watching a lot of film and, but I never thought of really becoming an artist or a filmmaker when I was living in Korea. And I moved to the United States and started study, studying mathematics and then art at the same time. And by chance, I did a study abroad to Harvard where I took a lot of film. They have a great film and video, video department and um, Joan was teaching there, actually, Joan Jonas. And I took a video class with her and that's how I got introduced to the history of American video art. And, um, and then I realized when I started working on my piece of my own way, I started to realize that there's some kind of influence from my previous backgrounds like mathematics and architecture. Not directly, it's not like I'm working with a subject of architecture or mathematics, but just the way I structure my film or the way that I think about the subject was very influenced by this previous field that I was studying. My first film that I made was called Adada, which was about stuttering. So um, the whole film is trying to tell a story, but it doesn't really tell the story till the end. And it restarts again and again and again in different style and different form. So it, it is really about the trial of um, talking. Adada is a word that comes from a stuttering sound in Korea, for example. There's one called From the Commanding Heights, dot, dot, dot. And the story is about this actress, Korean actress from the 70s. And she is a, she is a very big actress. And it was a rumor that not many people know, and it might not be even true, but that I heard from my mom about this affair between this actress and a president of, of the time. And it's sort of like based on that story um, that I know from my mom. And I'm trying to trace that story through uh, imaginary stories that I'm developing outside of that history, for example. So, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm making rumor of that rumor in that story, in that video, by also working, collaborating with uh, this musician, Dogger, David Michael DiGororio, and he's retelling the story through music. There are sometimes uh, decisions that I make in the, in the work that is um, necessary and it be, it's important because of the content and sometimes it's out of the convenience. For example, in the room was all about people in an interior space and it had a lot to do with light and darkness. For example, because of this actress that I talk about, the president, when the president, how peop, the rumor started was because um, we had a lot of uh, electricity blackouts. Uh, electricity shutdown in my village and people were wondering why this was happening and there was a rumor that because um, it was illegal to have an affair in Korea I mean still it is if you're married you cannot have an affair and that's uh, um, that's not allowed so uh, and obviously because the president because of his status as well you know he was cutting shutting off the electricity before he enters the village so nobody can see his face so, I mean, that was a rumor, right? So, it all had to do with light and darkness and things like this, you know. And I related to other parts of the story that has to do with the light and darkness. And so, light became an important motive in, uh, in this particular series. And night and day and things. It's, it's very general that what I'm talking about, it, but it's sort of, it's very related to... Um, how I was working. And then the drawing came because the, um, what happens, I'm in the fair, it's in the, in the light. It's a very different, it's not my installation really, you know, it's like part of the installation, right? So uh, you don't see it in the right way, but um, usually it's in the darkness next to the video. So the vi as the video flickers, the drawing disappears and appears. Sometimes it's not there, sometimes. so it becomes uh, alive more than a static drawing that you see on the wall. So I'm, like, even when I draw, I'm interested in the interaction between the people and the drawing, how the drawing becomes alive. Or uh, like the drawing that you see in that fair is a combination of a tree and a, a snake and a dog face for me. Then, um, so it's, it's all about morphing and things that is not alive becomes becoming alive and things like this. That's why I'm also interested in performances because it becomes more direct. When I first did the performance, 
I was thinking of it as a way to um, um, way to show my video in the right way, because sometimes in a museum or in um, even in a screening, it becomes um, there. There are more things outside of that video that I wanted to deliver, but I cannot do it um, all the time because I don't have so much. I mean, I cannot always go to my screening and deliver it to people, right? So performance was uh, nice because I can be physically present and I can uh, make the right environment uh, in which my video can be shown. So, so it's like massaging your brain and mind before and after your video so that it, it just becomes right. Yeah. I also wanted to ask you about collaborating with other artists. You've collaborated with people like Joan Jonas who obviously as well performs in her work, makes little architectonic models, also works with screens, video, and her own body and performs in her work. What is, what is it like when you collaborate with an artist? How do you find the dynamics of, of that? Well, it's all different, different collaboration, different, obviously with different people. But I, um, I usually work with other people because um, when I work with video or film and video performance, if I only have myself, I can only be the only person. And it's, <laughs> it's more interesting when you have some kind of dynamics with other people. So that's one of the reasons why I collaborate. But by doing that, I always like to have my working process be included in my work somehow. Um, and. For example, one of the things that I did before uh, collaborating with this musician was another, it was a very different aesthetic and it was about me writing stories and videos, film and videos, ideas about this other artist doing things. So it was me imagining what she likes and what she should be doing. But I was thinking about what she actually does already. So it was about this um, for example, there will be a video where um, that I make. It's it was about it's called Twelve Minutes, and um, I made this video, and it was about twelve minutes, and I give it to her, and then she reshot the whole video with her in it before she was not in it. So uh, and the the only rule was to make it um, into a better video, or how she would like the video to be, and then she would give it back to me, and it has to be the same length and the same. Uh, content. So she gives it back to me and then I redid it again. So we did this back and forth and then it becomes like a um, different video between the two people. Um, I was not very interested in collaboration process where people negotiate and find the middle ground. I, I was more interested in like this or like like a conversation where one person speaks and the other person listens and responds is more as a whole is more interesting to me than um, Two people, or two people agreeing all the time. It's not very interesting. <laughs> I also wanted to ask you, obviously, when you make installation, I think this is a, a quite interesting question anyway for artists that make work, which then at the end of the installation time, when it's in the gallery or museum or art fair, it's then painted over or it's lost in some way. How do you feel about that, that when the work is actually almost, you could say, destroyed, really, and then would have to be remade again? Do you feel a sense of loss when that happens? Because it intrigues people, that. Yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially for this affair, because, um, well, but also I'm trying different things to see, because I haven't, I've never drawn on a wall in an affair. <laughs> before. So for me it's also an exercise I think to to do things in a different way but at the same time for example this drawing is a variation of the same drawing that I've done before uh, several times and every time it's the like same character in a way but he becomes uh, he becomes physical every time I draw it but he's some, somewhere there because it's, it's like a word or, or a letter or um, uh, I'm not doing uh, first Mm. In other words, 
I, I am being creative when I'm drawing because I'm doing different things, but I'm not really thinking about the composition or things like this. You know, there, there are rules uh, in, uh, from, in which there are rules that I use when I'm draw, drawing this. There's uh, order of things that I do. It's the same thing. It's like a performance. When you do the performance, when you make the performance, and my performance is rehearsed. So if I do it several times, uh, um, there's an order of things that I do. Um, so, or just like the letter that you write, is that there's an order of where you begin. The A, for example, is from here to, and then you draw a circle, and then it goes like this, you know. So, um, I find that interesting, that every time I draw this character, it changes, and it comes back in a different form, you know.